Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to make a quick video on my endoscope. This I've owned now for about three years and I got it off of Amazon. It was just under $40. And at the time I bought it, I really didn't have too many requirements other than it was affordable. It could fit inside of an engine. It was high def. And for me, an important feature was the ability to record the video. And this one met all those requirements so I bought it and I've had no issues with it. I've used it successfully to look inside of engine blocks and inside of cylinders to help diagnose what the problem was. Anyway, a lot of you have been writing me recently that I need to get a depth tech endoscope. And yeah, my answer is I already have one, but I think the reason for all those comments is because there have been some reviews recently of their newer products that contain not only the one bottom mounted camera like this one, but also a side camera. Well, DepthTech reached out to me and they asked if I wanted to try out their newest product, which surprisingly has three high def cameras on it. It's an all in one unit. So the plan is let's get this out of the box. We'll take a quick look at the features and then we'll put it to the test. I'm gonna put it inside an engine, see how it compares the old versus new, and let you guys decide how they compare. All right, so let's take a look in the box. And I've actually already had a peek. Haven't turned it on yet, but I wanted to make sure the battery was fully charged. And it wasn't completely charged, so I did top it off just to make sure we have enough juice. Anyway, it comes with a really nice case to protect it when in storage or transport. We've got a user manual right there, which honestly, you're probably not gonna need. It's a very intuitive design. On the front here is a big warning saying that if you don't plug the camera in, then it's gonna say on the screen, no signal. So that would seem obvious, but I guess the issue is, is that they made the connection snug. So that way it doesn't fall out and you might stop pushing the camera plug in before it's actually fully seated. So just make sure you get it seated properly. And if for some reason it's not, when you turn it on, it'll say no signal. So yeah, self-explanatory. So let's get the camera out, which is hidden under here. We've got the charger the camera itself and a few attachments. There's actually a magnetic attachment as well as a hook. So if you drop something that you can't reach, the camera will kind of guide you to it and you can pull it out. So these just thread on this little piece right here twists off and you can put in its place one of these. So let's plug the camera into the unit. It's actually keyed right there so you cannot plug it in backwards. So we'll get that plugged in and fully seated like that. And then we can turn it on. And by default, it's going to the bottom camera. Now the light intensity you can control just by the arrows. So press to the left, all the way to the left, the light's off. And of course, all the way to the right, it's at full intensity. If you push this button quickly, it inverts the image. A long press will switch cameras. So now we're on this side. Another long press will switch to the other side. And there's two more settings. Long press, it does a split screen, bottom camera with one of the sides, and another long press will do the bottom camera again, but the other side camera. And if you do it one more time, it brings you right back to the beginning. So pretty easy. Uh, the, this button right here is actually how you take pictures by a quick press. And if you wanna take video, press and hold, and the timer starts counting. That indicates that you're recording. 
Now, you can't actually switch cameras while it's recording. I mean, you can try, but it's not going to do anything. So you have to stop the recording, switch cameras, and then you can resume the recording. And that's basically it in a nutshell. I mean, the only button I did not cover was this top right, and that's the settings. So you can choose your default resolution. In this case, it came at the max set already at 1080p. Auto power off was set to off by default, which is how I prefer it. Language is English. Format the card, so we'll do that right now just to make sure we're ready to go. And system reset in case you mess everything up. This tells you how much free space you have. So there are 32 gigs built into this, which should be plenty. And data transmission, that's probably for transmitting the data that you've recorded to your computer. And finally, the firmware version, and that is it. Those are all the features. Pretty intuitive, pretty easy. So I say we put this inside of an engine. But first, I'm going to start with the other camera, the older one. We'll do that. Then we'll do the same with the new one and just let you guys see the difference. All right, so let's take a look inside this engine. This engine actually runs well, but it is an older engine. So I'm curious to see if the crosshatch is still there or if there's a lot of carbon buildup. You know, just see what we see. And I don't see anything. Let's turn the light up. Okay, and the piston's actually at the top of its travel. So let me rotate the engine, get that piston at the bottom. All right, the engine's been rotated. It's now at the bottom of its stroke. And yeah, honestly, I can't, can't really see a whole lot. You know, that is the top of the piston. I can see there is some carbon buildup. If I try to pan to the sides to look at the sidewalls, I really can't see anything. And we turn the brightness up on full. So you can just kind of get a glimpse of the cylinder. But yeah, I guess that's the issue with having a camera that can only look down. There's no chance of seeing the valves. Really can't tell anything as far as the condition of the cylinder. So let's try the new camera. So let's give the new camera a try. I'm just going to hit record so you guys can see a little better. And we'll go down on in. And already that is a big difference. The clarity is much better. And even the field of vision is a lot better. I can see the sides of the cylinder. I can see the cross hatch is still there. Maybe a little score right there, that vertical line. But yeah, much higher quality image and better field of view. So that alone, I'd say, is a big improvement. So let's try the side cameras. So I'm going to stop recording for a second. We'll switch to one of the side cameras. And one thing to note is that these side cameras, they have different focal lengths. So depending upon what you're looking at, one camera might be better than the other. You know, in this case, let me hit record. So I can put it up on the screen. You can see the sidewall here pretty clearly. Nice cross hatch still on the cylinder. Let's try to rotate it a bit. And yeah, it looks to be in very good shape in here. Now I'm hoping to maybe see a valve. So let me see if I can do that. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, there is the intake valve. It is currently open. Rotate it the other way. Maybe we can see the exhaust. And this is where having another camera comes in handy. So let me stop the recording. We'll switch cameras. And there's the exhaust. You see it clear as day. It's nice and white, so it was running lean. But it is closed. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good compared to the other one. So yeah, I'm impressed with this. Well, I've got to say, this camera, it surprised me. I expected it to be better, and it was, but it was better in more ways than I anticipated. You know, the side cameras, that is a huge game changer as far as providing visibility to things that I couldn't see before. But the clarity on all three of these cameras and the field of view is much better. And that's just going to make things a lot easier trying to diagnose. Anyway, I wanted to take a second and thank Depths Tech for sending me their latest model. I think you're going to be seeing this one a lot more in my future videos. So I'm going to leave the information down in the description in case you want to find out more about this. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.